So here's the controller which has very kindly been lent to me by someone to test this bike. Now he said he was having a few issues himself with it, but he doesn't know whether that was his bike or the controller. So I'm kind of doing a favour for him as well by testing this on a different bike to see if I get the same problem as him. But anyway, hopefully this will at least sort out the delay issue. Um, so yeah, we can see that. So I've got to fit this under the bike where the old one came off. Oh, this is going to take a while. <laughs> Right, so hopefully this is going to be a very exciting moment because I'm going to prove that the old Savs home was faulty. So I've fitted the new one, set it to 80 amps DC in normal mode and 85 amps DC in high power mode, which is on at the moment, and then 150 amp phase amp, sorry, 150 phase amps normal, um, 160 peak, and then max 350. So let's give it a try. Okay, it's moving. Oh, I'm actually so scared to twist the throttle. Three, two. Oh, are you having a laugh? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shit. Okay, now I'm not worrying because I think I know what this could be. The main thing is that we don't have the ramp up issue. As long as it's consistent, I'll take it as a win and then we can fiddle around with the settings later. Uh, if we just do a launch here actually, then this will give us an idea of starting torque. Okay, so let's have a look at the settings. Lovely day for test riding today at least. <laughs> But yeah, that is not ramping up. So that's already a win. Let's just pull over here and have a little fiddle around. Let's change the throttle mid current amp to 150. Right, let's just go all out and put the current to the max. Okay, now I'm guessing I've set something up wrong because that is... Is it this throttle? I'm going to try a different throttle if this doesn't work. Now this here is yet another Sabaton, which someone's kindly given me for the purpose of trying out to see if it works. Now they've had very good experience with this, it's kind of like a known good controller. Um, the difference between this and the one I'm using is that this has the TFT display, which if I just turn it on, you can see it boots up like that and gives you a few stats, which I don't need, but it's quite cool. Um, gives you things like motor temperature if you go through. Anyway, now the reason I think this might work is because it gives you the options to go through the power levels here. Um, and someone in the comments put something about they think that my old one might have been like stuck on power level 1 when you first turned it on, which, I don't know. This is one of the ones that has the pedal assist sensor, um, as I say, the TFT display. So quite similar to the first controller I used, which worked. It's got also like the throttle and hall sensor, temperature sensor, e-brake throttle. So yeah, I'm just gonna fit it and see how it works. Now this one uses different mounts, so I'm gonna have to zip tie it on, I think, because I don't wanna drill new holes just for this. But I get it mounted, pop the batteries back in, and then fingers crossed, this will give us what we need. You'll also notice that the bike's no longer under here. I've moved to the garage just to free up some space. So let's go there. Right, um, batteries first, I think. Then I'll figure out how I'm gonna strap it underneath here somewhere. So I put these zip ties in one on each side whilst I was doing the battery and the aim is to use these to secure the bottom and then put another one through these holes at the top to secure the top. So I'm gonna have a go at doing that now. Right, switching to my phone because the camera just died. That is mounted in there pretty damn securely. I mean there's a bit of a gap there but that's not an issue. So now I've just got to connect up the power wiring and everything and then just the cables from here that I need to. And there we go. And if that looks like a mess to you, that's because it is. Um, we've got a bit of a bundle of wires going on down here. Zip tied it to the frame. Got the little dashboard installed here. This is only for a quick test run. If it turns out to work, then we'll see how things go, but should be enough to get it up and running. So just got to program it 
and do the horse hunt to test and all that, then we can take it out. Right, so it's about nine o'clock at night. Just been doing a few more tests on this out on the patio and I've got some hopes for this. The delay is gone. And it feels like there's more power, but we need to do a proper stretch. So when it gets light again in the morning, as you can see it's dark, um, we'll do a proper stretch. So I'll cut to that now for the magic of filmmaking. Right, so it's all wired up and calibrated. And when I twist the throttle, we have movement. So let's head outside. Right, let's just turn it on. There we go. And keep it in power mode one. Oh, we are throttle. Right, now on this, the throttle midpoint set quite high, so we're not going to get much punch early on. It's about 500 watts, that's quite nice how it gives you a real, real time power out, but obviously speed is completely wrong because apparently I'm doing 50 mile an hour down here. Um, but let's go to my usual place. Question is, does it have power? Right, so that's because it's in power mode one, we've got about a kilowatt. Okay, let's try power mode two. There we have. Okay. Oh, no, I know why this is. <laughs> I set the power to 20 amps for testing. And away we go, hopefully. With nine kilowatts, and we do. <laughs> God, that is fast. Oh my God. This is what I wanted to create. Blow me out quick. That's gotta be nine kilowatts. That's gotta be nine. Yeah, so I've charged the battery up to full. I've also put a little bit more pressure in the tires. So these are running 25 PSI. I found that 30 was too hard and 20 was a little bit soft. So I've kind of gone for a hopefully a happy medium. Um, I mean, I'll fiddle around with it, to be honest. Started looking at insurance, actually. Um, one of my mates, he actually suggested looking at kit car insurance, which is a really good idea, because um, at the end of the day, that's basically what this is. Um, kit cars defined as something where uh, a manufacturer gives, gives you the parts and you assemble it. So, you know, I haven't like made the motor or made the controller. So I think that would count as, um, you know, manufacturer supplying. Um, and then obviously I've put it together and everything. Um, so gave Adrian Flux a call today, who are a uh, UK insurance company. I know they do quite a lot of modded car stuff. Uh, so I thought I'd give them a call. Um, they're very helpful, but basically said that um, you need to wait until it's done and say so you've got the MSBA certificate as well as the uh, license plate basically um, to prove it's road legal. So yeah, I'm going to focus on getting it through the MSBA. I can probably get the VIN number soon, um, give them an email. Because all I've got to do basically is... All I've got to do is basically the 12 volt wiring, possibly put some hub things on it before the MSVA, but I'm not sure whether to do that because essentially everything that you put on the bike is a potential point for them to fail it. So, I'm trying to put as little on as possible before the MSVA just so that, as I say, nothing to fail it on. Um, that's the plan anyway. So, yeah, get on with the 12 volt wiring. Um, get that all done. And then, yeah, start registering it. Yeah, that needs sorting out. Just see if the front wheel comes up. 
Oh yeah, that comes up. That definitely comes up. I mean, if you lean back at all in this thing, that front wheel's coming out, let alone if you deliberately try and wheelie it. Let's try that one more time. Yep. <laughs> See if the motor's hot. Sabaton, barely warm. Motor, barely warm. Tire, a bit warm. Front brake. <laughs> yeah, that's boiling. 